Were you expecting this? For this particular case, I would have to be honest and say we weren't expecting this. Up the road in Lincoln, Nebraska, they are crashing electric vehicles or EVs, plowing Teslas and Rivians into concrete structures and guardrails. How important is this research? Is very critical to all of you, the motorists, my family, my colleagues. We do this work to save lives and reduce injuries. The average sedan weighs around 3,750 pounds, but Tesla's weigh more. It depends on the model. A Rivian is even heavier. Almost any EV is significantly heavier because of the batteries. Crashed EVs reveal a simple fact. Safety structures on highways and streets weren't designed with these heavier vehicles in mind. Safety structures fail. We need to catch up so that we can continue to protect all of you, the motorists, as you commute every day. Take portable concrete barriers used to protect workers. Watch what happened with a Rivian. Everybody in this car is going to be okay from your test, correct? Correct, because the vehicle was safely contained. But there is a concern. There is concerns mm -hmm. uh, in that our hardware that we design is not yet designed for this size of a vehicle. The concrete barrier slid. I'm more concerned about the workers. And yeah. then it goes airborne. Cecilia Batty is a Tesla owner. This is her second EV. It's fun to drive, smooth to drive, uh, quiet like my other car was. So, I mean, it, uh, pretty great car. And I think I bought the second one they had. She took us for a test drive and points to all the safety features and cameras. Researchers recently tested a Tesla similar to hers with a common guardrail. We found that the structure and geometry of the front end allowed it to actually underride the guardrail system and penetrate under and through and then hit debris behind. I don't think I had that expectation. Yeah. The fact that there is a difference. Cecilia considers herself a safe driver and overall EVs do well in crash tests. This testing suggests they respond differently to safety systems designed with traditional sedans in mind. Take this crash. At first, researchers thought it performed well. Sensors revealed problems. The jolt for riders inside the car was way out of normal safety ranges. Were you expecting that or is this another you got to get out there, you got to do the test to see what happens? Honestly, we were not expecting that. We thought this would be a smooth demonstration. We didn't expect to see that. An additional problem is no one is keeping track of EVs and crashes with traditional guardrails and cement structures. KCTV5 checked in with both the Missouri and Kansas Highway Patrol. Neither specifically track those crashes. The Midwest Roadside Safety Facility has only crashed four EVs with safety systems. But that's not statistically significant enough. We need more data to understand the difference at this point. All four crashes raised concerns about guardrails and safety systems when it comes to EVs.